So now let's begin with question number 12 of paper 2. So here the NCR definition is given in the first part as you can see. And then there is a function f of mnp is given. First we have to evaluate f of mnp and then you have to evaluate g. So now what is f of mnp? So f of mnp is sigma mci. This is your mci. Then n plus i cp. Then p plus n cp minus i. And i belongs from, varies from 0 to p. So uh, let me expand this because there is no, uh, nothing like a triple uh, series, something like that. n plus i factorial upon n plus i minus p factorial, p factorial, n plus p factorial and here n plus p minus, uh, so minus p plus i factorial and p minus i factorial. So what you get is n plus i factorial gets cancelled off, correct? And we are being left with mci. I did not expand this because nothing is getting cancelled off. That is the only reason. And n plus p factorial upon p factorial. Now this motivates us that we should have n factorial, right? Then n factorial, n plus i minus p factorial and p minus i factorial. So, uh, what we get here uh, is summation MCI, MCI, N plus P uh, CP and N C, uh, N plus I minus P. Sigma I varies from 0 to P. Now this is independent of i, so let me remove this, uh, let me move it out. So sigma mci and nc, uh, what, uh, this will be what? p minus i, right? ncr is equal to nc n minus r. Now this is a product series, right? So this becomes, and I usually fondly say that जब coefficients का sum constant आ रहा हो p तो top का sum c bottom का sum तो m plus n c p now this is your f of m n p right now what is g of m now think about g of m comma n that they are talking about is p zero से n zero से m plus n and this is the deal n plus p denominator में क्या दे रखा है n plus p c p तो ये तो कट ही जाएगा तो essentially अपने पास m plus n c p मिला so that is nothing but two की power m plus n now g m n जो ये question apparently was looking quite complicated but it turned out to be not that complicated except for yeah if you were to you have to take a daring step to open these n c r now g m n now if you were to look at the choices the first choice is right gmn is nm right the second choice m of n plus 1 or m plus 1 so this can be very uh, you can easily verify right these are not a big deal for us m plus 1 n and g of m comma n plus 1 this is also the same stuff right so that's your b choice now if you were to look at c choice 2m 2n 2m 2n is going to be 2 over here right and d C choice 2m 2n is g of 2m plus 2n versus twice g of mn. These are very petty ones, but yeah, let me write them. So C choice is wrong, correct? And if you were to look at the D choice g 2m 2n, that is evaluated mn ka whole square. So mn ka whole square, he to uh, ye hai, right? Iska square kar denge to ye jayega. So D is correct, right? So even though the execution may not look uh, tough, but as per my experience, I will rate this problem as tough because in exam, one should always think from examination temperament. From examination temperament, this is going to be a tough problem.
so let's begin with question 13 now as you can see uh, an engineer comes to a factory for 15 days well he has there is a span of 15 days in which he will appear in the factory for only four days and no two days should be consecutive it is a quite a mundane problem so let's say he comes on these four days correct these four days x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 are the absentees that means that uh, four days he is coming and these are the number of days he is absent so x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5 is going to be 15 minus 4 that is 11 <coughs> now if x1 is 1 right the span that is given is first to 15th june if x1 is 2 so that means he is absent first two days and he is coming the third day is if x1 is 5 then the first five days he is absent and he is coming the sixth day okay that is the meaning so if x2 is 3 so that means whenever he comes for the first time in the factory then he takes three days leave after that and then he appears again right so now this should be greater than or equal to one right because he doesn't come to the factory any two consecutive days so this cannot be zero if this is zero then they are coming for the consecutive days so for instead of xi let us write xi dash plus one so if extra xi dash is zero then also xi is one so what you get is x1 plus x2 dash plus x3 dash plus x4 dash plus x5 is equal to 8. Now this is a multinomial case which we colloquially call as beggar formula that is 8 plus 5 minus 1 c p minus 1 that is 12 c 4. You just expand 12 c 4 you will get the required answer. This is a regular problem easy to moderate most of the students must have cracked this one. Question 14 comes from the house of uh, permutation. It is also a easy one. That is, uh, there are four rooms. These are your four rooms. And there are six persons. We have to distribute these six persons in the rooms such that each room has at least one and no room has more than two. So, pehle hum one, one, one de dete hain. So, four uh, persons are uh, consumed now. Now, two persons are left. So, if I were to give two persons here, then a single room will have three uh, rooms, three persons. So, the only option is this. So, let us group the six persons in these groups. Two factorial, two factorial, corrective factor. One factorial, one factorial, corrective factor. So, that's a group theory formula. So, now we have a list of two guys, two guys, one guy, one guy. And now we have to distribute this list in these four rooms. So, this is going to be your 4 factorial which upon solving will give you the required answer this is again a easy to moderate problem and students must have not found any difficulty in solving this one now again let's move to probability consecutive problems have been placed on probability in pnc now question number 15 is a tough cookie it is not an easy one now what is the problem states that you have two dice you are rolling them and you are noting the sum now there is one event let me call as event a now event a is what obtaining a prime number prime number and what is event b obtaining a perfect square so that's your perfect square right so first of all how can you obtain a prime number so prime number ke liye you will have what 1 1 1 2 1 3 3 1 3 uh, sum is not prime 1 4 yeah 1 4 1 5 no 1 6 then 2 1 correct 2 2 no 2 3 2 4 2 5 yeah 2 6 no similarly 3 1 no 3 2 3 3 3 4 3 5 3 6 3 7 no 7 is not a case right so 4 1 yeah 4 2 6 4 3 7 4 3 7 and then 4 4 uh, 4, 5, 4, 6, no. Then uh, let's talk about 5, 5, 1, no, 5, 2, 5, 2, yeah, 5, 3, 5, 4, 5, 5, 5, 6. And lastly, 6, 1, 6, 2, sum is 8, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, 5, 6, 5 is 11, yeah, 6, 5. That's it. That's your perfect square. That, that's your prime number and your perfect square starts from what 1 2 3 yeah 1 3 
then one four one five one six then two one two 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 three two four two five two six i'm enumerating like this okay three one uh yes three two three 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 four three five three six yes three six then four one four two four three four four uh four one four two four three four 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 five yes four five nine that's a perfect square four six five one five two five three five four that's nine again five six is not then six one six two six three six four six five six six no so that's about it so we, we have enumerated a and b now what is given as you can see given it is a perfect square what is the probability it is odd so the question is of bayesian theorem that given it is a perfect square see the question was you keep rolling the dice till b or a event happens now what has happened the you b occurs before a so that's what yahan par hum likhenge perfect square comes before uh prime sum is prime right now what is the probability that uh, the it is a odd perfect square it is a odd perfect square this is the question so what is this r intersection s divided by s if this is your s and if this is your r right that's what the formula is now let's evaluate p of s now what is p of s probability perfect square comes before now how many let, let uh, how many ordered pairs are these 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 15 15 so these are 15 ordered pairs and 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 these are seven ordered pairs right so pehla prime number se uh, perfect square se khatam ho to perfect square se khatam pehli chal mein perfect square aa jaye ya fir na perfect square aaye na prime aaye to 22 या थर्टी सिक्स माइनस ट्वेंटी टू फोर्टीन फोर्टीन बाय थर्टी सिक्स दोनों ही नहीं आए और अब वापस से अपने पास क्या आ जाए परफेक्ट स्क्वायर आ जाए सेवन बाय थर्टी सिक्स या पहली दो चालों में हम ये दोनों ही नहीं आए और फिर परफेक्ट स्क्वायर आ जाए सेवन बाय थर्टी सिक्स एंड द स्टोरी गोज ऑन आर इंटरसेक्शन एस पहली चाल में ही आर इंटरसेक्शन एस का मतलब है परफेक्ट स्क्वायर से खत्म हो और वो भी ऑर्ड हो तो क्या संभावना है पहली बार ही परफेक्ट स्क्वायर से खत्म हो और वो भी ऑड हो तो जरा देखना ऑड वाले परफेक्ट स्क्वायर्स कितने आ जाएंगे आ, या फोर है ना तो फोर ओवर सेवन या फिर दूसरी चाल में परफेक्ट स्क्वायर से खत्म हो और फिर वो ऑड हो लाइक वाइज नाउ वन कैन ऑब्जर्व दैट सेवन ओवर थर्टी सिक्स कम्स आउट टू बी कॉमन एंड इट्स अ इन्फानाइट जी पी राइट Similarly, here seven over thirty-six into four by seven comes common, and it is a infinite GP. One minus uh, seven by thirty-six, fourteen by thirty-six. Mm, yeah, ये तो common ही रहेगा, right? So one minus fourteen by thirty-six. This gets cancelled. This gets cancelled, and you are left with four by seven. That's your probability P. Now the question uh, asked is 14p. It is just to make an integer, as we know. That is your eight. So I regard this problem as tough because, uh, according to my experience, many a times students miss this conditional probability Bayesian approach. And if they are able to write this one, then I am pretty much sure if they have prepared well for JE, they would uh, nail down the problem. So overall, this problem is little tough. Okay, uh, this question was there in the sheet itself. and this is a very old classical problem that had appeared in iit je and uh, so uh, mo if students are exposed to it then it will not be a challenge else it will sound to be very tricky uh, now the question is what you we need to find s f of 1 over 40 f of 2 over 40 and likewise f of 39 over 40 Minus f of half. Now, some symmetry can be observed that the sum is turning out to be one. And as I said, this is something like exposure-based problems that you have done these problems. So 
uh, it doesn't sound tough otherwise these are tough problems so uh, let's simplify this one so 4 plus 2 dot 4 ki power x into 4 that is right 4 ki power x yeah yeah say you know yeah so this is 2 upon 4 ki power x plus 2 so what you observe is f of x plus f of 1 minus x this is equal to 1 so here we have 39 sets so 39 may 2 by 40 barring 2 20 by 40 f of 20 by 40 rest it is symmetrical right so total mein kitne banenge 19 groups banenge hai na ek group ko chhod den 38 38 by 2 19 19 groups so 19 groups 1 1 1 banayenge so that will be 19 plus this thing and this is f of half So ye minus diya hi hai isliye isse kat jaye and hence the answer is 19 so this is moderate वैसे ये easy है for those who have looked it and if you haven't have this exposure then it is a tough problem so that's why I am rating it in between not moderate ठीक है बच्चों now let's take upon 17th question now f of pi is given to be minus 6 and then capital F of x now 0 say x f of t dt now this is a reminiscence of what Leibniz method right so let me write this with a little prejudice fine then uh, 0 se pi I often jokingly uh, tell in my class that if at all there is no question that has come uh, on Leibniz then certainly and you are getting stuck in some question then for sure you can assume that this question has to be on Leibniz and till now we are discussing now 17 question we are towards the end of the paper there is no question on Leibniz so this was to be on Leibniz without an exception anyway so cos x dx now this is equal to 2 so if we were to split this 0 se pi f dash cos x plus capital F x cos x dx dx 0 se pi this is equal to 2 let's integrate it so this is going to be your second function this is going to be your func first function so fx into cos x minus fx into sin x 0 se pi and here the limits are going to be 0 se pi similarly let me consider this as my first function and this as my second the rational behind assuming this as first because we know the derivative so this is capital fx integral that is sin x 0 se pi minus 0 se pi capital f dash which is nana f right into the integral that is your sin x dx 0 se pi so this gets cancelled off and what you are going to get is f of pi cos pi minus f of 0 cos 0 and here pi pe sin vanish ho jayega 0 pe bhi sin vanish ho jayega so this is equal to 2 now f of pi is given so uh, f naught this is what is asked so this is minus of f of pi minus 2 f of pi is minus 6 6 minus 2 so this is 4 so I would rate this again a moderate problem because uh, applying uh, this is so enticing for everybody to apply uh, Leibniz rule and then this is imperative for us to think to apply by parts over here because differentials and then integrals are quite evident so this is easy to moderate problem now students we are towards the last leg of paper 2 so 18 question is from maxima and minima and this year as you must have uh, saw the videos of a paper 1 and paper 2 there were so many questions of maxima and minima limit continuity derivative differential equation was the king of advanced 2020 now uh, what is the question f of theta is equal to sin theta plus cos theta ka square and then sin theta minus cos theta ka 4 we have to find the point of local minima before we get into that let us first simplify it so sin square plus cos square 1 2 sin 2 theta cos theta likewise this thing square ka square isko bhi khol dete hain so 2 minus sin 2 theta right plus sin square 2 theta that's your f of theta differentiate karte hain to find the local minima and maximum cos 2 theta and 4 sin 2 theta 
cos 2 theta. If you were to make it 0, then we can see that cos 2 theta is 0. Yeah, sin 2 theta is equal to half. In the question, it is mentioned that theta belongs to 0 se pi. So 2 theta 0 se 2 pi ho gaya. So 0 se 2 pi, the only possibilities are pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2. And here, the possibilities are pi by 6 and 5 pi by 6. Right? So there are four points that we are getting. Now, in order to find whether on which points minima or maxima lies, higher derivative, higher derivative test mein chalte hain hum. So I often, you can also look at by sign change, but it is always advisable jab trigonometric expressions ho, to then try higher derivative test to identify minima and maxima. So 4 sin 2 theta and what is this? This is students 2 sin 4 theta. So the derivative is going to be 8 cos 4 theta. So 4 comes common and sin 2 theta plus cos 4 theta. So now you have to evaluate these 4 points jin par positive or negative ka sign pata lage hume. So this is pi by 4, 3 pi by 4, right? Pi by 4, 3 pi by 4. This is pi by 12 and 5 pi by 12. So ab theta pi by 4 dal rahe hain. So ye pi by 2 ban jayega. Ye pi ban jayega. Right? F further. 3 pi by 4 dal rahe hain. So 3 pi by 2 ban jayega. Ye 3 pi ban jayega. Pi by 12 dal rahe hain. Ye pi by 6 ban jayega. Correct? Pi by 3 ban jayega. Then 5 pi by 6 ban jayega. और ये 5 pi by 3 बन जाएगा तो पॉजिटिव पॉजिटिव नेगेटिव नेगेटिव और लोकल मिनिमा होने के लिए f डबल डैश शुड बी नेगेटिव राइट सॉरी f डबल डैश शुड बी पॉजिटिव सो दिस इज द थिंग राइट सो तुम्हारे पास जो मिनिमा के लिए पॉइंट्स आ गए वो pi by 12 और 5 pi by 12 है क्वेश्चन में लैम्डा 1 pi लैम्डा 2 pi तो लैम्डा 1 plus lambda 2 is 1 by 12 and 5 pi by 12. So that is 5 by 12. So this is half, 0 0.5. It just entails some calculation and again there is no intellectual thought that is required in this one. I will rate this problem as moderate.